We have some special content for you today. We can't wait to share a snippet of something that we just did just for you, our listeners here at the WBNL podcast. Yeah, join us today on the This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 190, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Brian, we have been promoting our 15 essential, or excuse me, our 15 real estate essentials to compete and win in 2020. The modern or known as the yeah, there you the go. 2022, excuse me, yeah, the modern real estate buildings uh business plan course. And it, it it was an awesome course on Tuesday. Yeah, we had so much fun. We had a whole ton of folks uh sign up. Not a, uh, we had a great turnout, and we decided for the next three weeks we're going to give you some snippets of this here on the podcast and encourage you to, if you're not already part of our Dream Builder group over at Facebook, that we broke this down method into what, three? Uh, it was basically a three hour training course that yeah. we put together that was business planning plus all the most, that was essential number one. We'll just give you that <laughs> exactly. little, yeah, you know, and then 14 other key essentials for your business to really compete and win. I mean, I really do believe, Matt, that that is the latest and greatest stuff that we've been talking about over the past year that we've been putting into practice ourselves In Vegas with me, uh, our team is, is killing it with a lot of things that we talked about. And then I'm kind of starting fresh. I mean, I'm pretty proud of how things are going for me right now. I, yeah, I, I look at September sure. 1 was my commitment day to, to be all in on uh, real estate, not just kind of dabbling in it. And as we record today, we're in the middle of November. And uh, what is that? September, October, we're going into third month, 90 yep. days. Yep. Um, not even yet. It'll be 90 days in December, December 1st. And what? I got four escrows going on. I'm going on another listing appointment. And we talked about in this course, this workshop, whatever you want to call it, it was a three hour, uh, you know, in depth workshop. Uh, we talked about stuff that's working for us, yeah. shared a uh, traditional, good old fashioned, traditional things that are working, but making sure you're doing the things that you need to compete and win. I know that sounds a little cliched, but if you're not doing certain things and you're not online and you're not like diving into video, then you're getting left behind. And so you we're going to so showcase a little of it for you. And what I think is so interesting, and this came out quite a few times during the uh, presentation uh, when we did it, uh, is that it's not. You, you really just need to focus on your business. So many real estate agents are just kind of out there. They have their license and they're doing it. It's a little bit haphazard. You know all the things you're supposed to be doing. You're doing some things here and there. But when you really have a, a focused plan, and we talk about business planning a lot, you know, and we really do. We absolutely, you know, condone the written business plan. We think is the best path, you know. But even if you don't go down that path, you know, you still need to have a a a path for yourself longer than just what you're doing next weekend, you know, because it really makes a difference. A lot of the things that Jan has had and found success with are things that are really basic things that most people don't do. So we talked about a lot of that in the uh, the workshop and, um, and you just need to focus on that because you'll be successful. I mean, my God, you know, for Jan to go from zero to where she is right now in less than 90 days is pretty phenomenal. I mean, it just really proves that if you focus on your business and you do the things that you know you should be doing, business will come. Honestly, she'll, that, you'll, change that, your, you'll, you'll change your, 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 your niche probably and your path, but right now it's working. So if it's not broken, <laughs> don't fix it. Don't don't tweak fix it. it. If, it's, if it's not, if it's not work, I mean, if it's not working at all for you, then you need to make some adjustments. And one of the things that we, that I have really come to the conclusion on, cause I'm using these tools, I'm using our business plan. I'm going to be focusing on my, I'm finishing up strong with, I'm excited about finishing 2021 and having just working basically in the last quarter, last, you know, two quarters, getting things done, not even the last two quarters. Well, right. yeah. Yeah. So, since September yeah, uh, is that you do need goals and, 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 but then you have to take action and you just said it, Matt, it's setting the intention mm -hmm. and then going, doing the activities. And it doesn't have to be massive activities in action. I mean, I, I just went out and did open houses. 
I just got committed to focusing on a couple activities. I I did good old fashioned mailers and those work for me. And then I did follow up. And I I mean, to me, open houses are what's killing it for me right now. Uh, So, and if you do it the right way. So, you know, the beauty of it, the beauty of it really is, is taking action and business become, it perpetuates, right? It builds on itself. You you start, you start getting out there and doing it. It, it, it just starts, there's momentum in that. I mean, totally. I've watched it, watched it happen for you and it's a fantastic thing. What are we going to talk about today? Or what, what, which sections of the workshop are we going to break down? The section that we're going to give you here today in the podcast is um, becoming the agent of choice for your, your area. I'm really talking through exactly some things that I did to, to, start making that happen in a market that I've never been in before. Uh, and, and honestly, how I feel that how I made the commitment to become that local housing market expert in the neighborhood expert, right. the things that I did, the things that I've always been recommending, I actually did. And we're just going to walk you through that, that about 15 minute segment is about 15 or so minutes, or maybe a little longer segment of the first hour of our training on exactly what you have to do to do the same thing for your area. And if I can come into an area that I haven't lived in, okay, and within a few short months feel confident enough, and this is the, the key thing that I want you to hear, is if you become that student of your area and you know more, everyone thinks they know the market, but I, I challenge you to dig deeper and make sure that you can have a conversation with anybody if you're just having lunch, if you're at an open house, and talk about your community or your farm or your neighborhood and on the numbers and what's happening and what the trends are, then that confidence that you get because of that comes across when you're talking to people and people want to work with you. That's Absolutely. what's been happening for me. And so we get into a little bit about all the other things that you can do to make that happen. All right. Well, beautiful. Right. Let's go ahead and let's dive into those two sections of the 15 Essentials Workshop, and we will catch you on the other side. One of the things that we've discovered in the last year plus is this next section we're going to cover on becoming the agent of choice for your area or your niche or what it is that you're doing that he was just talking about. And why is it time to do this? We're past the time of doing this, to be honest. And I hear so many agents say, oh, you know, uh, people are online. There's so much competition. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you've been following the news, Zillow's having some problems, aren't they? Uh, Zillow is losing some money and both Zillow and Realtor.com have have kind of gotten away from the core stuff in my opinion, okay? And this is why the, so the question is, how do you compete in this big, huge search game where these guys and the next next best thing to come along have the eyeballs of the consumer? It's to be the hyper-local real estate expert, okay? Why? Because the consumer's in charge. They have been in charge for years. When I first got started, they weren't in charge. We would have, I'm really dating myself, uh, a thing that looked like the phone book that would come to the office twice a week. And that's where all the listings were. Well, those days are long gone. They have the data. They start searching online months, 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 months before they choose an agent. And they before they buy or sell, they want a great experience. That's what people want. The consumer wants an amazing experience. And they still want to work with somebody that they know, like, and trust. And this is where, in my opinion, Zillow and Realtor.com are, there's opportunities in the way they're doing things. They're moving to these models that's decentralizing that connection with the agent, or it's, it's, it's basically making it more like, and so here's what I find with customers I have right now. They're still using Zillow because Zillow is in Realtor.com are good at, and you can beat this too, I'll get to it later. Uh, with reminding them to keep coming back to the platform because what people want to do is look at houses. That's what they're good at. But you know what I'm finding? People are seeing it like that, but then they want to talk to a real agent in a local area that they know. And you know how they find people? Video. I have a story later for that, uh, cause when we get to that, that the clients I'm working with right now, uh, we're going to go to New Hampshire um, and they chose an agent. I'm just going to say it now. Okay. In New Hampshire, who they found their videos online where they were just talking about things to do in New Hampshire and they're just basic, easy, simple videos. They started to watch the videos and over time they called and said, Hey, we feel like we know I had dinner with them and they actually said the words. We felt like we knew him and we liked him and we trusted him to help us. Now the sad news is 
he didn't do a great job in delivering the experience that they wanted. And the good news for me is they decided not to move to New Hampshire. Okay. And they're having that experience with me. So what do I mean by this? So you can see that as a problem, or you can say, I have the solution because people want to work with people they know, like, and trust. And who are the local experts? They're not getting that experience when they call Zillow and Zillow takes five times to connect them to somebody. And then they get hung up on, they're like, I'm just using it as a platform. Now I'm going to go find someone that I'm going to Can I tell you with. guys really quickly, uh, just to add, Jen, really yeah, important here. It. So here's an example. And, and you know, this is, this is possibly me putting a tinfoil hat on, but I don't think I am. I'm doing a deal with Open Door right now. Open Door no longer lists Las Vegas as a buying market on their website. You know why? Because people were having horrible experiences Whoa. trying to do deals with them. So what they did is they made partnerships with local real estate companies. So those local companies could service their open door purchase properties and give a better experience. So these companies are learning that, hey, we got to be hyper local too. So that competition is coming, coming guys. But again, there is no way of them being able to do this without somebody in the local, com local area. Wow. Right? Real estate is local. And so just to reiterate here, there are examples of these big companies knowing that they can't build a model around not being local. And so they're going to try. Um, but, you know, as, as agents ourselves, we're still going to be better off Always. in terms of being able to be that local person because people know that in the transaction, they are working with this large corporate company and it's not going to have that local information all the time. And so... Uh, just an example there um, of what's happening I love already it. in our market. My experience locally here with Open Door was just that. I was like, oh no, we have to try to get a hold of somebody at Open Door to tell me if this property has any offers on it. And it would took me forever to get through to somebody and I talked to three people. So that's the experience that consumers having. So I love it. So we're going to show you how you beat them at that game. We leverage those guys to get them to come find you. And that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time on now, how to do all this. Okay. Cause that's what happens. I mean, I got clients right now. I'm trying to convince them, get on my website. They're still using Zillow, but they're not going to go talk to anybody else because they now are my clients. They just like getting the, they're used to, they've been for months and even a year on Zillow or truly in this case, both actually. And it's like, do you realize that this, that's the same company I had to say to my agent? So how do you be the local? First things first, you have to be the local housing expert, okay? The local industry and local market expert and why? Okay, this is so powerful. Hello, everybody. This is your career. You should be the expert at the local stats in your area because knowledge equals confidence. And everybody that's listening to me now, I know you can kind of push your way through a little bit of this, the average sales price in this, but I bet you could go and be better at it. And you know why I know this? It's because when I moved from Vegas to here in Florida, I knew that this was important. And I, over a course of a couple months, studied the market that I'm working in. And then because I needed to feel confident when I went and held an open house so that I could have a decent conversation with someone and tell them what they want to know. People are looking for someone who has local knowledge, advice, knows the neighborhoods, can talk about it. This is the biggest thing that you can do. And many of you do it naturally because you've been in the business for a while, but you can take it up a notch by studying the numbers I'll show you. Okay. It is, it'll, it, it instantly has changed my world out here because I have so many clients just because I have conversations with people, mostly at open houses. It allows you to start conversations. People talk about real estate all the time, everywhere. I've picked up business sitting, having barbecue, after I uh, held an open house, I was doing some work. Somebody wanted to know what I was doing. We turned it into a conversation about real estate. I talk about what's happening in the market. They're asking me questions. Oh, do you have a car, Jan? I have a condo to sell. Literally, just, just because I felt confident talking about the market that I'm in. It also gives you uh, uh, content for creation, which we'll talk about, like doing videos and other things, uh, blog posts, and so forth. So, not just the market stats, what's on the market, what are the average sales prices, what's going on with um, the trends is important nationally and locally. 
but you also have to master all facets of the real estate industry. Do you understand what's happening on a national basis? What's happening with the government that's impacting real estate? What's happening? You got to stay on top of that. I'm going to show you how you do that where you get this information if you don't already do it. But do you know everything about real estate transactions? And of course, the laws and regulations in your area. And then I want to just take a second and say, can you talk about 1031 exchanges? Are you familiar with what's happening with the iBuyers? Are they trending up or down? Right now, they're all, tar- well, Zillow's bailing. Open Door thinks that they're going to, you know, um, Zillow, I love Zillow, lost billions in the iBuyer game the way they were doing it. And they thought it was going to be okay to take like losses. I mean, right now Zillow is selling paid overpaid for properties and they're having to sell them lower right now. And they're dumping these properties. Open door thinks that they're going to, you know, pick up on that. But do you understand foreclosures and short sales? If you have to, do you know what trio and easy knock or knock? Do you know that there's lease to buy programs out there? Do you understand the probate process? Can you help somebody with a 1031 exchange? And if you, the answer is, no to some of those things, and you need to go get some training on it because you're going to run into somebody that says, I'm doing a 1031 exchange. I need, and, you, and if you don't know what to do, then you're in trouble. So this is all part of the mastery to help you be that expert. How do I recommend that you learn the stats? This is what I do every day. I did it this morning. I have saved searches in my MLS matrix here and Stellar matrix in both places that I'm licensed. And I have it so that I can go and look at the areas, the, the farms I work, and overall, what's going on in the market? And I just pull it up. I go pull it up. I have actives. I can go and I have hot sheets. I just constructed it the way that I wanted to so I could get my finger on the pulse of what's happening. So I can say things like, do you know, in on top of the world is the area that I farm. Today, there's 33 listings. Yesterday, there were 35 listings. Today, there's 33 and they average from uh, you know, a, a 90, there's a $99,000 condo in here up to 245. Okay. And you have to know this monthly, get the reports. Every association of realtors, state or local has some kind of a compilation of reports that they put together for you. And I bet you just don't even know that they're there. Okay. So go f- seek it out and find it. Uh, there might be title companies. If you're in, uh, in Nevada, for example, the title companies will send all types of information out. So get on top of that and learn how to read and interpret those stats so that you can turn it into layman's language and help people understand what all that means to them. Now, I'm going to do a shout out here. I love these guys. This is Keeping Current Matters. This is the best investment I ever made. It's like 25 bucks a month um, because I use their data all the time in the market reports I do every month. I'm about ready to do that for our Nevada team and for Florida. And um, they do daily blog posts. I have social media that I can, uh, stuff I can post every day. And then once a month, they put together a market report for us as real estate agents. And this guy, David Childers, who's um, in this company, says, here's what you need to know about what's happening in the national housing market. And here's what you need to tell your clients. By the way, take all our slides. Let me show you five ways to use them. Use them what you want, um, download our script, just so much content, you'll be blown away. All right. So go check it out. There's a 14 day free trial. If you use a little QR code here, you'll be able to take a picture of that. It'll take you through our referral link. They give us a $25 gift card. I mean, you get a $25 gift card when you sign up. We get a month free. Okay. So full disclosure on that is one of our little referral things, but I will happily pay for this every month best 25 bucks I've ever spent in my real estate career to stay on top of it. All right. How else can you stay informed? Get the information coming into you. Inman, RIS Media. Inman, you know, you have to pay for that special, you know, content. But honestly, that's like the breaking news for the real estate industry. Okay. There's opinions in there and there's a little bit of back and forth, but that's, if you want to know what's going on, you got to get the articles coming to you. I like Housing Wire. Housing Wire, you can subscribe to that. Business Insider, CNBC, whatever works for you, subscribe and have the information coming into you so you can scour through it and go, ooh, that's something I need to know. Or here's something I could share with my clients or here's something I could put on social media or my next newsletter, right? Then how do you get good on transactions and laws and regulations? Well, experience is the best teacher. But the next best thing is you go to classes. If you're in Nevada, go to Steve's classes, man. He, I learn something from him every single time. 
He's going to teach you the regs and the latest stuff that's happening. What's happened with the new law stuff. He's got a new law class that's out. Um, you know, get a certification or a designation class. You know, you know what you need to do. Go get the training. It's your business. Okay. This is what you have to do to step it up. All right. That's what you do to be the local expert. You, you step it up a notch and you, you know the numbers. But I also feel if you want to be hyper local, uh, you can be a community leader and you can get involved in the community. So I love this out here. I'm all about it. D Dunedin, Florida is where I really, I'm like 10 minutes from, I can't find anything to buy or uh, rent in there because it's so high. So I came 10 minutes out here in Clearwater where I am. However, I'm going to, there's an event tomorrow, everybody. Uh, Want to come, Matt Emerson? It's the Celtic Craft Beer and Music Festival tomorrow. I am on the next plane. Uh, not tomorrow. Sorry. It's Saturday. I, I was wishing it was Friday today. Um, but anyway, I, I am all about getting involved in the local community. Uh, I, I attend, um, there's a business thing to get involved with. Uh, it's about supporting local businesses and all this can turn into video. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but if you get involved in the community, you start making relationships and that turns into, you are even more of a local expert, which turns into referrals. And this is how it all starts happening. Okay. It's not rocket science guys, but you got to go do the work. Now we are big about supporting local business and uh, Cosmo really rolled with this when he first got licensed and I was working with him and, you know, Cosmo, just take a second and talk about how you, you started doing things on Instagram. Now you're, you know, over in YouTube, but you got business from just working with some local businesses and doing a little video promotion for them and the advertisements, right? Just share that story a little bit to get people to know they can just do it on Instagram. As an example. Yeah. Some, something that uh, when I first got started, my wife was in the business as well. And uh, what we ended up doing was going to local businesses and making a one minute video spotlighting them. And so that kind of became our way of connecting with the community and getting new followers um, with every new follower, we messaged, DM'd every single one. Um, we added questions in our uh, Instagram stories. So on occasion, we'd add real estate questions. Uh, for instance, one of them is we went down to a new community called Cadence. Obviously, you and guys in Vegas know what that is. Um, but I went around did a tour and I asked them, hey, what's keeping you from buying a house? And I put four questions or four answers there. People would answer them. And then I take those answers and... Um, whoever responded to them, I started a, a question in their DMs. And because I already started a DM with them every time somebody new followed, you know, that's, they get a notification as a result. And, and that's kind of how I built, uh, you know, social media to start with was, was that route of, of connecting with local businesses, creating a one minute highlight. Um, I did get, you know, $25 gift cards um, and, and did kind of a promotion that way back in the day. You can do that. You don't have to. Um, if you have a strong um, sphere or, or a friends list on Instagram already, this is a great way to, to build um, connection and, and stay top of mind again. Because if you go and you cover your favorite restaurants around town or your favorite stores, there's other people that follow you that enjoy those stores as well and that information. And, and you're going to stay top of mind of like, oh, hey, that's that person. They're in real estate. You know, they're really care about the community and, and it's a great way to connect. So um, there's an example. Also, I think we know oh. somebody Cosmo or, you know, of somebody, and I know of another person who that back to the USP thing, that is a total foodie and restaurant person. And that is what they're known for. They're the real estate agent that is constantly posting about places to eat and things to do, but guess what? It, it, it's attracting people who want to know they're writing reviews, they're doing things, they're talking about all these great places, and they're also promoting their real estate business and, and then, because they're passionate about it. The you know? part you also you know, get into is if you are providing value to these businesses and, and uh, you get to meet the business owners, you get to meet their employees, um, something you could say to the business owners, hey, you know, can I come during lunchtime if, if it's a business where people have lunch? Um, you know, can I come during lunch and, and have a class to your employees? And so now you've built this other connection of, hey, I can get in front of more people and talk about housing. Um, I could talk about selling or buying. And so that's that's the other aspect that's not talked about when you do this type of stuff and integrate yourself into the community. You get to, to connect with these owners and, and then possibly connect with employees and, and build a relationship to where you can assist people 
um, within that entire business. So a um, great way to, to get your foot in the door, especially if it's around things that you enjoy doing. So uh, I think it's great. All right, cool. And if you do have, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about some ideas around a niche or specialty. And then this is, you can bring this back to being super focused on what you're specializing in. Um, having a hyperlocal website is, is, is something that I think is powerful. And it's something Cosmo and I have gone to, uh, you know, we uh, have something coming up in a little bit where we can show the, the website too for Living Henderson. And, and you're branding everything in Vegas with a brand called Living Las Vegas in Henderson that has a website, a .com, has a YouTube channel. They go together. I, out here, I'm doing it with, I've switched it to Tampa <coughs> Gulf Coast Living, and we're using a, a, an agent fire website uh, because it's a WordPress website that allows us to do these things. Now, if you already have a website, you can create a hyperlocal area on your website that has things like neighborhoods, videos about the area, community events, you know, um, a feed, an IDX feed that just has the properties that are in Summerlin, for example, out, out there or where I live here in Dunedin, you know, and uh, spotlighting local events. That's how you can take it to a hyper-local level. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed those two sections of the, the workshop. You know, finding your niche and really focusing on being the local expert is so important. The things that Jan talked about, you know, studying the stats. I love that Jan is a, a student of statistics. It sounds like that's something you might not want to do, but it is vitally important. Right, Jan O'Brien? Mm. Yes, it's fun. I'm having fun with it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, you are. That's super mm -hmm. cool. Um, if you want to see the whole workshop, I want you to go over to WBNLcoaching.com. Hold on one second. I'm going to pull that up for us. If I could just find where I put it. <laughs> you can go to WBNLcoaching.com and get access to this, to our uh, Dream Builders or to, um, yep, to Dream Builders. Okay, we want it. you to yep. go to Dream Builders. And here, Jan, tell them real quickly while I'm getting this pulled up here, what you get when you're a Dream Builder. Yeah, Dream Builders is really our private Facebook group. And uh, and you get not only when you join our, our private Facebook group, you're part of our community. We're going to give you access to all of our free stuff as part of this community. And we're committed to monthly creating workshops uh, that we do. And we actually have our next one scheduled if you're listening to this and it's not already December, December yeah. 15th, <laughs> 10, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 Eastern or whatever the applicable time zone is for you. We're going to go live. We'll be in there. You can ask us anything. And we're in this particular one, we're going to talk a little bit about jumpstarting your 2022. Have you gotten everything accomplished that you need to uh, enjoying the holiday, but getting yourself ready for the new year? That's perfect. Right. So if you want to join our, our uh, Facebook group, the Dream Builders, go over to our website, wbnlcoaching.com, right at the top, a big, huge green button. Click on the green button here and it will take you over to the registration page um, where it will go over once again, the benefits of joining uh, the Dream Builders we have here. And then we have just a little form that you can fill out and that will take you over to a uh, the site at, or take you over to a landing page where you can go to our site, but it'll also give you instant access to the courses, all of our free courses and all of our free downloads. So and we give you discounts and you get early access to anything we roll out. So just become part of our community. Uh, you'll be getting if you if you just kind of interact with us in that Facebook group, you'll get the notifications in Facebook. That's you know, that's the key to Facebook. Now you have to actually say, hey, hello, and you'll start seeing it in your feed. Um, so that's it. All right. So next week we're going to get do another snippet for you. Um, I think we're going to talk a little bit about social media. That then, is right. Okay. See, the, the, un, let's unmask how you actually deal with social media, right? All right, right on. All right. So everyone, go over to episode 190 over at uh, wbnopodcast.com if you want to see the show notes. It links to all the stuff that we just talked about as well. So we will see you next week and be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.